Um, okay. A very good morning and warm welcome to everyone. So a brief introduction about uh, I, Architects Nigdha Roy. Welcome all of you to the uh, GSOA webinar series 2022 on the topic of successful career in architecture organized by Geetam School of Architecture, Hyderabad. This is a platform for uh, the aspiring students of architecture, their parents and guardians and mentors. And this series is always held on every Saturday and Sunday. This uh, webinar started in the month of August. So on every Saturday, Sunday, we have uh, uh, we have uh, guest speakers who are practicing architects and uh, today are uh, we invite our uh, there are two guest speakers uh, architect bhairavi dhut ma'am and architect ujwal ujwal parik sir so uh, welcome ma'am and sir on board so uh, uh, so first yes yes so firstly i would like to introduce both our guest speakers starting with architect uh, bhairavi dhut ma'am so, um, ma'am, uh, Bhairavi ma'am has done um, BR degree at uh, SEPT University, Bachelor of Architecture from SEPT University, Ahmedabad in the year 2006. And she's a strong believer in design discipline through spatial and material language. And she has early professional experience at DP Architects Private Limited, Mumbai, and C168 Architects at Singapore. And uh, she has always been involved with a... Uh, uh, real estate, hospitality, and commercial design sector. Uh, architect Bhairavi Dood has also done MSc in Advanced Sustainable Design from Edinburgh, UK in 2011. And she's also highly inclined towards sustainable design, which is her prime design intention. And uh, today we will be looking forward uh, to her works as well. So she's our guest speaker one. Now it is time to introduce our guest speaker two. Uh, architect Ujwal Parekh, sir. They both are the founder and principal architect of uh, Reasoning Instincts Architecture Studio, which started in 2014. So introducing Ujwal, architect Ujwal Parekh, sir. He's also done Bachelor of Architecture from SEPT University, Ahmedabad in 2006. And he strongly believes in research before proposition. And he believes more of research before executing anything. So Sir has also worked at HB Design PTE Limited, led by Hans Browser, Singapore. And he has worked on various high residential design, workspace design, and urban design. His early professional career he gained experience with projects in India, Thailand, and Singapore. And he has uh, extreme love towards understanding cities. Their essence and complexities has motivated him to bag also distinction in MA in urban design at National University of Singapore in 2010. He has also thoroughly enjoyed his full-time lecturer at Singapore Polytechnic from 2011 to 2014 and has also been associated as visiting faculty at SEPT University Ahmedabad and has also undertaken few design studios. And also, not only this, both the architects have also won many awards. Um, they have also won many awards from the uh, year 2019, from 2016. Uh, they have many publications of their uh, for startling from office at Chatral in Arc Daily Online, August 2016. Then House Between Walls in September 2017 was shortlisted in top five houses at FOIT 2017. And the Portal House was also had one silver award at FOIT 2017 in residential category. The Cube House is also published in uh, from July 2018 to May 2019. It has got many recognitions. It has got publications in Arc Daily Online, shortlisted in top five uh, houses of FOIT 2018, and also platinum winner of FOIT 2018 and a award, design award in Italy Bronze Award in residential category. And the Reasoning Instinct Architecture Studio, it is also under 40, under 40 best and trendsetter architect and interior design. So we are delighted to have you, sir and ma'am, on this online webinar. So uh, I hand over. Uh, so now we are, uh, you can start on with your presentation, sir. With your, welcome you, sir and ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> It was a wonderful uh, introduction. 
almost like a resume <laughs> to be honest. But thanks. Thanks, thanks. Uh, okay, I uh, just share, share my screen. Yeah. Okay, you'll have to enable me to share my screen, please. Yeah, done. The, which one? Thank you. Okay. Um, I hope everyone can uh, see the yes the uh, sharing. I'm just gonna move this if I may. Are you able to see the entire slide? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fine. Yeah, so you can leave it. Okay. <clears throat> so um, thanks first of all for inviting us. And uh, we are very uh, actually glad to share uh, our journey with all of you, right? And uh, we'll probably, uh, uh, I mean, I'll just talk about the fact that I think there are many ways of being an architect. I mean, uh, not only practice is not the only uh, way uh, a, a graduate from architecture school can probably make a career. Uh, post the graduation. However, maximum of us kind of tend to go towards the practice. And within the practice also, uh, there are many different diversified way that one can practice, right? And uh, so we are just uh, uh, one of them who is also trying to uh, see what uh, we can uh, contribute towards, right? So just the way the, there are many ways of being an architect, I think there are also uh, when we look into the idea of what is success, uh, there are many attributes that one associates it, itself uh, with the idea of success. Uh, there could be achievements, uh, the desire, uh, the aspirations, the idea of setting up goals, uh, the victories that you have achieved, uh, all the accomplishments that you have, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so I think, but what one also need to uh, look into is and try to define success is through this set of different kind of attributes and not only through achievements is the idea of passion is the idea of fulfillment uh, the idea of growth uh, the idea of uh, discovering in the process something uh, fulfillment uh, and then also the idea of commitment how much we are how much we are committed to uh, to our work to our profession uh, to our passion for that matter. So what I believe is there are certain aspects what we have talked about, which are quite evident and generally perceived with the idea of success, but there could be another way of looking at success and uh, which eventually should lead us towards two aspects, which is one is developing our capacities and uh, the second one is nourishing our abilities. You know, so both are kind of required in order to uh, proceed and uh, try to do what you intend to in that way. And this is kind of implied uh, or implicit towards two aspects. I mean, it's very relative. You One needs to look into the aspect of where we have started and where we have reached. And the journey hopefully continues further, right? So when I say it's implicit, it's implicit to the idea of uh, where you have started and where you are, right? So uh, uh, what we're going to do is now we're just going to quickly go through uh, where we we started and where we have reached in a way, and then later on uh, we'll share some of our works. In primarily within that also we will be focusing on one particular project a little bit more and take you through the whole story of that project and uh, then we'll uh, see how it goes let's i'll like uh, this yeah so as ujwal said that this has been uh, once we got this invitation to take the talk we were uh, we were having this discussion on what is success before that, we had never had time to even reflect upon this. So it was a good opportunity for us. And um, looking at it, we we thought we would just start where we, we are from, where we were from as uh, young uh, teenagers trying to pursue a career. 
uh, it kind of reflects on our upbringing as well. So both of us have a very different upbringing. Uh, I come from a professional parent nuclear family, which has moved from city to city every two or three years, shifting schools and exploring cultures. Whereas Ujwal comes from a joint family. Uh, since birth, he's been in a particular city, uh, making friends. He still, uh, you, you walk with Ujwal on the road and he may probably find someone who he, whom he has studied certain courses with. So uh, this upbringing, however, at one point in time, we both were not sure of what we wanted to pursue. So uh, once a student comes to 10th and 12th grade, and then there's this big question of what career you want to take. There was just one thing very common between both of us is we didn't want to take uh, the very conventional professions or, or the trends like engineering or you know, being a doctor. And um, both had that interest. So when the parents ask us, what do you want to pursue? with no background in architecture at all, um, we had our own journeys of how we landed up in architecture. For Ujwal, it was more or less of a bribe that he got from his father that if you take a professional <laughs> career, I will get you a motorcycle. And for me, it was uh, basically coming from professional parents, they were very worried of what sort of a career I would choose. And uh, my mother literally took me to most universities, um, good universities, the best ones in the country, and showed me that this is what you do here, this is what, and when we walked into SEPT, I think I had a moment of spatial experience through the journey of the building. And that is where I said that without any clue of what architecture is, but this is what I want to do. This is what I want to create as well. Now, of course, this is a master's work. We're talking about uh, Professor Bibi Doshi's work. And um, both of us landed at the same place. Uh, we joined School of Architecture SEPT. Um, luckily, we both got in. It was very competitive at that time. It still is. Um, and the journey began. So academics for that matter in architecture opened a very different arena of thoughts. Um, the pedagogy of the school was such that um, it, it just broadened your horizon of thinking and exploring. So there were basic design exercises. Um, then comes the technicality of teaching you how to make a plan. Uh, what is a section, what is a climate responsive design, et cetera. So three years of architecture school, and I still feel it's never enough. You're, you're learning as, as you do. And then you are thrown into internship wherein you get hit by the hard realities of practice as well. So no matter where you do your internship, you're learning. So I did my internship in Mumbai, uh, Kapari Associate. We did, we did huge commercial projects, urban design projects. Uh, where I were, we were talking about anything not less than one is to 200 scale. And Ujwal, on the other hand, went to a very small and uh, definitive practice of Shabir Umbana at Lonavana, uh, primarily where he was probably even de designing the door of knobs and handles as an architect. So uh, the scale hit in hard, the practice and the nuances of practices was a revelation for us as students. And then uh, what happened was, exchange program, wherein uh, at our time, I think we, we very few schools had this exchange uh, programs with different universities around the world. And now there are many, which is, which is very good for students. Um, wherein, again, it's all about architecture education, broadening your horizon and your capacity to understand design, spatial design, material design, and all of that. So one, one experience to the other helps you to grow as an architect. Um, you graduate out, you take up first jobs uh, in different arenas, different uh, kind of practices. Again, I joined a, a multinational uh, firm with designs all over the world. And uh, Ujwal uh, joined uh, HCP, which did a lot of institutional designs and um, a very good learning base. Uh, I think Ujwal by then had developed his love towards urban design already. And we decided to uh, move to Singapore again to the same aspect of broadening her life. What happens very interesting with young graduates is they have the whole, whole world to explore. And I think we grabbed that opportunity very well. We <clears throat> shifted to Singapore to see the scenario of work, um, work methods. It, it's a very good place to learn. And uh, we worked and we joined different firms. Ujwal decided to do master program. Then I decided to do master program at Edinburgh, uh, and we again worked. Uh, in the meantime, Ujwal also found his love towards teaching. Um, I still am a hardcore practitioner. I, I don't think I can get myself into teaching, but um, Ujwal found that balance between 
teaching, learning, practicing uh, in a very subtle way. And uh, at a point of seven years of working for other people, exploring, we thought we need to settle down and we started, we <coughs> thought the idea of finding, uh, making our firm. Uh, it took about sure. nine months to um, get the idea straight, get our line of action straight, because by the time we had already developed as professionals, Ujwal being very, very intuitive in the way he designs and how he expresses his designs and me being very, very systematic and um, with, with everything has to have a reason and everything, you know, so we had to come at the same page and merge our paths as a career together to form this studio. Just to add some one thing that, uh, yeah, it just looks like a chronological order of what we've been going through, but uh, there were various, uh, various different parallel things were happening and that some of their decisions were also uh, that we took at that time was depending on a lot of other things. The idea at that time was to one person study, one person work. Mm -hmm. And, and we support each other as well. Yeah, yes. so uh, you do get uh, kind of uh, challenges faced and that's what we thought and we thought, okay, uh, but unfortunately the admissions at Singapore Polytechnic didn't work out in the first round. Uh, so then we both had to start work and then recession hit 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, one of us got laid off. Uh, one of us got uh, uh, salary uh, cuts. And mm -hmm. there was a point at the time that we thought there's no more, we cannot survive anymore in Singapore this way because it's an expensive place to live in. And uh, there was a time we were thinking, let's just go back. And uh, maybe some Thank luck. There we got another job uh, at C168 and then things were different after that. So it's not always that uh, it's, it, it might just look very smooth out here, but so it was not. What, yeah, what I'm trying to get at is both of us as professionals now, uh, architects, um, we never started with that as a thought. Our, our entire schooling, we were very free uh, in thinking we, would, we didn't know what we would join. But having come to 15 years of practice now, we do not regret this decision at all. The, the, the very momentary uh, intuitive uh, reactions we had to lowering of a motorcycle to just walking through uh, Doshi Sahib's building and realizing spatial uh, connections with built forms. Um, that was, those moments were enough for us to think of architecture as, as a career. And um, whatever the journey has been so far has been uh, very fulfilling and we are very grateful for it. This, what we call as these ordered tangibles, this is something that we can always reflect upon. But I would like to, what we would like to share is something, uh, which are these wandering intangibles, something that we value in this journey of 15 years. Um, one is we have met and talked to numerous people. I think this profession per se allows you to meet and greet people from all uh, design, non-design fields. Like uh, even now in today's practice, if I talk about there is a morning meeting with a client versus an afternoon meeting with a labor on site. So there is this distinction of how you have to behave, how you have to talk to them and how you interact with them. So this is a big learning we have uh, and we value this kind of a learning, you know. <laughs> Second is um, impressions of known and unknown destinations. We do projects all across India at the moment. and. Uh, it is very interesting to understand uh, context related to that in terms of design. Also exploring, of course, different foods and culture because you're traveling so much and travel, as we said, in academics, it was all about broadening horizons. So we still haven't stopped traveling enough. And every time you travel, you question, you retrospect, you think about how uh, we look at things and then you develop an opinion and you, um, you stay by that opinion, you, you take a stand. So that comes with experience as well. And whatever it is, even in dis design, when we start to reflect upon, many things are very subconsciously why we would like to design certain things in a certain way. You try to build it around the con context. But uh, what has happened is this entire journey has been like a very large progressive learning. And to per se, because of this presentation, we realize we're still learning, you know? we haven't stopped that. Um, when we started the firm, the, the name itself, Reasoning Instincts Architecture Studio, came about with the very fact the two, both of us have a very different style of uh, designing. And as I mentioned, I, I am the one who has to have a reason for every bit. And Ujwal is very, very intuitive and instinctive. 
so we we started with that and um till glad we've been eight years in practice and we're still keeping to it so we have our own sets of uh, dis design discussions in a very different way uh, the ethos of the practice is to make sure that each design has design exclusivity. We do not repeat ideas for any client. Um, we, uh, we explore and explore for every project independently. Uh, so uh, learning, as I said, is progressive. It is, it is not something where we, any point in time when we feel like we're not exploring enough, uh, we are very dissatisfied and definitely not successful in, in terms of today's discussion. So we do believe that architecture has allowed us to manifest environmental, social, and economical value. And uh, we are tapping on our capacity we have developed in so many years to reflect that upon our work. Um, what we would do is we would just show you our journey from the starting point and show you a bit of our work. And we can get back to the discussion of uh, uh, success and how we, we think we have reached a level of success uh, further. <clears throat> So uh, just, uh, so I think one of the key aspects is to be, be prepared, keep yourself be prepared because uh, you never know when the opportunity can come, you know. So the first project that we got commissioned for, and that is what uh, I'm going to share the journey of, of that project. And that's basically the kickstart for our practice. And, that's what made us quit our jobs in Singapore and return back to India. And we keep still date, eight years it's been that I've been back. I still answer people, why did you come back from Singapore? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, and I don't, now I have stopped answering that question anymore because uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it was always there that we wanted to have uh, to have practice together and try to see what we can uh, ex and express ourselves in that way, you know. So this is uh, what happened. I was here in March 2013 for a, for a, a, a conference, 360 degree conference. And uh, for three days in Mumbai, I flew down from Singapore and I met the client just over a breakfast. And uh, he told me that, uh, see, at that time we didn't have a practice set up yet, okay. And he's like, see, I live in Mumbai and now I have this large two acre plot in Umargaon. Umargaon is a small beach town near uh, Mumbai. It, it's the last town of Gujarat before you enter Maharashtra. And now he wants to make a kind of a weekend home for himself with a unique experience. And uh, we, we kind of made a presentation sitting in Singapore to him and he liked the proposal and he's like, I want to build this. And that's when we decided, okay, it's time. It's time. Uh, we're going to quit our jobs and we're going to go back and try this to set basically up. a leap of faith to be very honest yeah we just try to take a leap of faith there yeah. and we had just had our first child at that time he was just a one year old and uh, we just decided that's it that this is an opportunity we have and we have to be prepared for this and we quit all our jobs and eventually we moved it took a little bit of time uh, so in december again i visited in our India, I was still working at Singapore Polytechnic at that time, and I made the site visit. So these were the pictures of the site that I took. And uh, what was very interesting is the, the kind of trees which were present already uh, on site. Uh, Feb 2014 uh, is when we actually made the presentation. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, am I here? No, okay, so this is still the, this is still the site details that you have. So that was the site in each town, so you always feel uh, the kind of breeze of the sea near you and everything. And uh, yeah, so in Feb 2014 is when we started looking into conceptualizing the ideas and everything. So one of the driving force for us in this case was uh, the, the presence of the trees. And the, this had to do a lot with a lot of things. Even when we started detailing certain design elements, we took inspiration from this tree. So the first job we, we started looking was to identify certain glades, uh, like in between areas between the trees, right? And uh, how do we connect those glades, uh, whether we do a built form or whether we don't do a built form. And then we started looking into how do we divide into public domain and personal domains, and we can possibly have those in between spaces and this create this multiple overlaps of different low, uh, in different, uh, uh, domains and everything and then 
kind of give more value to the undefined space, which will probably happen in between them. Please. And uh, that's how we did a conceptual presentation to them and show them a proposal wherein the four bedrooms were having its own privacy and the central part where it connects could possibly have the live, living, dining and the recreational part and the service of the kitchens and everything. Uh, so the idea was well received by the client at that time and he was very excited about it. However, of course, the feedback was in and uh, we had to compress down the number of square feet uh, and the built up area and everything. So we, we, we kind of uh, also put in a little unusual material over there, which was cotton steel. So this was in 2006, uh, sorry, 2014. And uh, uh, cotton steel now has become very popular in a in, in lot of architectural applications. And uh, so we were also very, I would say in that way, lucky to kind of uh, get a kind of set of client who has allowed us and give us so much of creative, creative freedom in that way, you know? So, so moving forward, so the whole idea was this four different uh, blocks, which will probably have these four private zones, which is the sleeping areas and the bedrooms, what we termed as the kamana, kamanas, and the central one became the house. Right, and then the whole design process went on. How do we integrate the uh, the cotton steel portals and the massing of the house with the plan and everything? One key uh, significant, uh, I think, uh, success in this project was that uh, we could convince him that he should not bring the car inside the plot, and uh, you keep the car at distance away from uh, your house, which would just house it over here along with the uh, helpers room and everything and you kind of have this nice ramp uh, with a long approach towards your house and also the fact that then there is no entry to the house as such where it can define that you are inside or you are outside. So this was the final plan that was there. So you kind of have this ramp coming up from the uh, parking space, then you arrive ideally to a, an outdoor room uh, which does not have kind of define a formal door kind of a thing. One side is the recreational part, the other is the living with the door. So we kept the trees as it is. We tried to build around it and all the almost trees were kept as it is. And addition to that, a lot of uh, landscaping features which done over there. Right? And uh, you have the four bedrooms. So the son, uh, the son has his own privacy even when the father is there you can all have it. That's what the kind of a requirement we had in the brief given by them. And so basically, if you have to go to the kitchen from the bedroom, you do need an umbrella in this case. So the whole idea was to have, give them a kind of a feel of a retreat uh, and not a conventional house, because I believe one is trying to make a weekend home is to because they want to have a different experience than their everyday home. And uh, so when even, and that followed in our subsequent designs also whenever we look into the idea of a weekend home it is a very different approach versus when we try to design a, a, a everyday home in that way right? and uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, different kind of other challenges that we face that i will come into the detail in terms of materiality and everything so this is just a little bit of uh, uh, illustrations of how the sections got developed uh, with that portal of cotton steel, you know, which kind of first marked the entrance of the house, like of a gateway that you cross through. And uh, so this is how the overall massing came together, right? So what we thought that instead of, uh, uh, you know, one big idea, there are this many different small ideas which are coming together and that composition of that is trying to define the architectural language for this particular house. Right, how we separate the servant and the serve spaces. So all the possibly because we were, I mean, we still feel that all the projects that we do is a very, is, is an, it's a new opportunity to do something new having, but this one will always remain special because uh, as it was the first one that we got commissioned for, and we were trying to, you know, uh, apply all the learnings that we had into this. So, and this is the way how, Kabana uh, unit works, okay? And similar language, architectural language, but the scale and the proportions are a little different. And then we got into the technicality of it. 
So again, sharing experiences, very different approaches. Uh, there are a lot of things we learned in Singapore also, especially in the way we, one makes a convent, the, the drawings, the working drawings and everything. <coughs> and we also realized uh, we had to change those methods because uh, change in the sense adapt, I would rather say adapt those methods, the way we used to make the drawings, because the way we, the contractor understands here is very different, right? Um, and so it, it took us a little while and now probably I can say eight years into the practice, we do have a kind of a system that understands, okay, what kind of drawing will be required with at what stage and things like that. But at that time we were, we prepared a whole set of working drawings and then the contractors coming back with us, sir, yo, ye kaise ho karna hai? how does this things happen? And uh, we don't we understand, understand these kind of drawings. <laughs> there are too many details within one drawings, X, Y, Z things. So, so we had to, most of the times we had to literally dissect the information and just give masonry plan first, structure plan second. And we had to, you know, so we kind of so came back and process as well. yeah, it was a learning process. We kind of came back and switched off certain layers and print it and give it again. <laughs> You know, this kind of thing. So, uh, and then the whole idea of materiality. And uh, so earlier, again, uh, we thought of doing, uh, 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 what was it, rammed earth walls. Uh, and uh, somehow it did not work out because the soil test report was not supporting, of the site was not supporting rammed earth walls. And it would, didn't make any sense to get the soil from all the way from Auroville and just do it. So uh, there were, we were looking for an alternative and then we thought about this pigmented concrete walls, but at the same time to make a 300 non-structural concrete wall was also not a sensible thing to do because, uh, and so we made this kind of uh, uh, an infill wall and just having a 70 mm, 70 mm of render of concrete on both the sides. And uh, we actually went ahead and designed the shuttering as well, you know, and uh, how what wood to use and what dimensions i want to see the grooves in it and everything and uh, to that extent also try to see what will be the proportions of the mix of the pigments and everything in it right so that's was there uh, the the main design feature of the house would be the cotton steel portals because it's the portal house and uh, uh, the way we developed this perforation was, as I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of uh, trees on site. And uh, what I lie down on the floor and I took multiple pictures looking at the sky. And this is the kind of pictures I got, series of pictures I got. And then I kind of pixelated it, converted it into a grid. And then we kind of, uh, you know, did some value engineering, whether we do a 13.125 or 7.5 or 18.15 kind of a thing. So whatever sky I, I saw, we made it a void. Whatever leaf I saw, we kept it solid. And that's how this entire, uh, the panels were designed. And then how do we arrange these panels on each of the portals, you know? And uh, then eventually, how do we lit it in the evening? So we have literally went on site uh, during the odd hours uh, and, uh, you know, uh, see whether I keep the light behind or whether I should I keep it in the front, what's the impact, what's the effect in the experiential values. And uh, then designing the doors, uh, the quite 11 feet tall doors, uh, you know, we had to deal with set of uh, this special windows uh, because they're quite large, uh, kind of 12 feet by eight feet, uh, large shutters that we were looking forward to. And then probably we found a vendor who could do this in wood, uh, Ritika Woods, and uh, they had done some brilliant work uh, in terms of windows. And uh, to the getting to the details of even a kind of a, a, a light feature, which is sitting on top of a dining table and how do you bring in that architectural language into the, into the uh, interior spaces as well, you know, and uh, of course, we had our own setbacks on sites when the contractors end up doing this kind of things. And uh, of course, we had to get it redone. And uh, and this all this whole process from March 2013 to December 2016, um, it was this particular day when the client did this puja in the house. And we were invited and we were there early in the morning, 8.30, I guess. And it felt really very surreal in that way because um, you're sitting there, you've finished the house now, and you start seeing people occupying it. You see the way they use 
certain spaces, which probably you would have also not imagined in that way. And uh, that was an incredible experience in that way, you know, uh, the Pravesh that they did. And we had this Marwari ladies coming in wearing the same kind of crisp sarees and the chantings and the mantras. And it was amazing. I mean, this is also a very much part of, uh, I mean, our culture and we value it as well. So that was also there. And now I'm just quickly going to share some pictures of the finished house. Uh, this is taken in 2016. Uh, of course, the landscape is, is much, much more developed now. This is uh, very early pictures of that. So this was the ramp that we spoke about that you talked. So there was a series of uh, explorations done for the kind of flooring pattern we wanted to do on the ramp as well. How do we enhance the perspectives, right? Uh, this is a picture just showing how the compositions of uh, the pigmented wall, the concrete, uh, the uh, cotton steel and the overhangs and everything come together. <coughs> so that was the idea we've had that we wanted to have kind of filtration of light, same as the existing trees, uh, how it, through the canopies it comes. So the only difference is that's very organic and filigree. And this one is more crisp and, you know, kind of more uh, uh, organized, but the experiential value with the light, the way it comes in, it remains the same. And of course, the kind of shadow play it brings along with it is an added advantage. Just, um, some of the pictures of the house. So I think, I mean, the way the materials interact and everything, you know, so that was quite, so this whole entire journey and entire process was very, very satisfactory in that way for us. Uh, so we were quite uh, um, inspired at the same time and encouraged to, to believe that, yes, what we decided to do to leave our jobs and come back and start doing something, it's worth it. And uh, that's where the entire kind of journey started for us with this house. Right. That's just an aerial view of the entire house. So what goes behind this? This is something we just uh, did for our own understanding. Um, so the site was probably 400 kilometers from where we are based, you know. So there were some um, road trips that were made, some 52 site visits were done. We got, worked with total 23 different agencies and vendors. If you statistically put in the things, there were 4,000 plus hours of work that had gone into it. It took probably 800 plus days to it. A team of four architects, including me and Bhairavi. Uh, I've traveled for around 42,000 plus kilometers uh, for this particular project. If I just calculate the distances that I've traveled with my clients to source the quota stones or whatever it is. Um, and, public, and so it was, it, it really was a, a great experience and to understand and reflect back that what it really takes to uh, to build a house and uh, having said that it was a very joyful journey and um, it was not that I'm not highlighting this to the fact about that uh, it was challenging or anything but I think it was very joyful there was a lot of uh, um, a, self, a satisfaction in doing it a lot of uh, inspiration to do this and we actually just did this after one year of the completion of project just to check on really one day we were just doing a, a, just a, a small discussion and then it popped up and we just let's let's just verify what what are the kind of if we really had to put a quantum to what efforts have gone into it what is it you know so similarly every project has its own stories and own uh, uh, narratives of how it has been done so i'm just now going to quickly go through some of our yeah. other projects so, uh while we talk about this one project, which kick-started our idea of starting our own practice, uh, as romantic as it, it may sound, it is definitely not feasible. So we had to even understand uh, different scenarios of how to uh, manage the practice, how to make it grow. And uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, one after the other, we worked hard to bag projects. Um, While Umargao House was the first project uh, we were commissioned to, it was definitely not the first we finished. 
uh, projects as small as this officer threshold. It has got uh, certain uh, accomplishments. Has was our was our first to just a thousand square feet of office space with uh, uh, detailed material, minimalistic designs. And post that, even this weekend house was the first that we finished beyond Umargam house. Now, what happened was that in Singapore and the previous jobs we were working with, we never meant and we never interacted with the end users of the space. And um, when we started our pro own practice, we realized that uh, the interaction of the end user with our projects and our design is something that is driving us uh, and giving us an immense satisfaction. So one after the other projects follow. This is the Cube House, um, which won the award uh, in uh, AAAT Milan. And um, similarly, many other projects follow. We, we, it's not just that we do houses, we do anything that requires a shelter. So there are industries, there are corporate houses and projects of any scale. Uh, as a young practice, you cannot say no to projects, but we have said no to many clients whom we do not think would value uh, the, uh, the the ideas that we want to portray. Um, from urban design to architecture, we also have tried our hands on interior design eventually after three or four years into practice because interior design is a totally different ball game. Um, <coughs> exploring is very different uh, take on it. And then came residential interior design as well. Many uh, shape sizes. As we said, we, what we have tried to be very true to our ethos of design exclusivity for each project, whether it is interiors or architecture. And um, the contextual uh, parameters drive the project. Uh, the design input and the design detailing is something that uh, drives uh, more of it as well. So uh, projects have followed. Luckily, we have, um, in the past eight years, we have rigorously worked about uh, 52 projects, which at least 30 have been realized. Um, there are quite a few of our dream projects, like this one in Indore, which uh, talks about sustainable principles uh, of passive cooling and you know uh, comfortable uh, work environment without air conditioning. Um, unfortunately, this has not been realized. Um, we are still waiting for a green light. <laughs> but there are these always these ups and downs in practice wherein you get caught up with design. Um, you may or may not execute, uh, or you get caught up in design and the journey, the design evolves to the certain parameters. And that journey has been um, uh, rigorous, however, satisfying in each project in a different stage. Certain hospitality renovation projects at urban scale, um, now, as going back to our expertise, uh, Ahmedabad is allowing uh, high-rise construction since a few years. So we have also tried our hands in feasibilities of various high-rise buildings. Fully one of them realized. <laughs> so, yes, and institutional designs as well. So for us, design in architecture, again, we have been playing a lot with scale, with the kind of client we work with. And of course, there are competition entries. You know, this one was for the Trinity War Memorial in Delhi War Memorial. Yeah, uh, where we where we approached and we uh, approached design in a different way. So looking at it, it is like um, we, are, we we refer to this Latin word "quo vadis." Where is where are you going? You know, where are you marching? What are you seeking? Because uh, once you get into practice, it is it is rigorous. It is uh, it consumes your time uh, towards attending to uh, issues, problems. It starts from uh, dreaming, from being romantic about it, then to make it into real reality, and then to uh, make it into, uh, you know, understand the nuances and context of a project and then reflect back on, upon your dream. So all of this is like a back and forth process for each project. And um, we have been successful in building certain projects so far, but this question of, uh, are we successful? Number one, no. And I don't know. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, the question we are just asking ourselves right now is where? What are we still seeking? seeking yeah. And I hope that that status remains as it is. That you keep the just only the only things. thing I would like to add here is um, the idea of starting one's practice, though it was a very difficult decision, uh, was a good one because um, <coughs> you feel more satisfied in you know interacting or seeing your spaces being used, unless the real estate. A scenario that we had practiced in Singapore was that you do not know the end users, you know, you're giving them one sort of a module <clears throat> upon your understanding. 
here we have a lot of repeat clients who give us feedback on design and we're learning from that so it is it is like a process that is helping us uh, you know learn design right so i'm just coming back to this question and i'm going to end with this in that way is uh, what is success again so now if we look in the context of architecture um, again uh, i think more important thing is to understand the measure of success than to actually understand success itself so as of now maybe the general perception of measuring success in architecture is of course one commonality is the wealth and the number of projects a practice has done on an architect has done what scale of projects uh, how much how many awards or recognitions what publications what's the strength of the team these are some some of the general ideas we associate with when we if we talk about the measure of success of an architect or an architecture practice but i think we can relook this as well and probably uh measure it through the lens of how much wisdom we have gained uh, what is the client satisfaction what is job satisfaction for you on this what progress you have made how many relationships you have built with with vendors with agencies with electricians with clients i mean and and you know things like that and and be appreciative about it and be grateful about it and uh, how many times your perspectives have changed you have redefined it and probably that could also be more a better way of measuring success and uh, which probably leads towards the idea of how it becomes our way of life you know and uh, also at the same time it helps us to discover our individuality and uh, if we can bring them together it should not remain implicit to where you have started where you are but where you want to be in the end of the day right and um, so again uh, is the so the i think for us it's not so much about a pursuit of being a successful architect but rather i think it is more important to just try to Uh, work towards the idea of making successful architecture or creating successful architecture and uh, i would just end with the thought one thought that i have borrowed from uh, a pj kalam's book ignited minds is that if you want to really do things the only thing you need is thinking which is should be the capital enterprise the way and how to work as the solution and uh, yeah so this is uh, what we had so thank you and uh, thank you very much once again for giving us this opportunity to share our thoughts and our journeys with every one of you thank you thank you so much <coughs> and i'm um, uh, uh, every time no these workshops app these webinars happen uh, we take new things every time and you was in the first uh, slides in the first few slides you said uh, learning from defeats yeah that is also success and definitely success no the goal post have uh, success changes all the time the journey the journey towards success is what is important than the destiny of success that's very very important and the experiences of all of you young architects and the way you are working uh, for architecture that is uh, that's very very important because uh, even now when we talk about design in india whether it is architecture or <coughs> graphic whatever it is we are still far behind uh, any developed country but um, seeing people like you know it's i am very hopeful that in india also the quality of design whether it is architecture product or whatever it is you know right. uh, the standard is improving and people uh, are getting more aware about uh, <clears throat> to pursue design to pursue design and uh, and basically they are the aspirations of the people isn't it as an architect we are trying to service the aspirations of the people and design is that and uh, seeing all these practices no so many young people working uh, with a with a grit and determination right uh, not uh, actually cut shorting uh, the work hmm, for success yeah, i so think very, very very work, as as rightly said the hard work is the only solution to it yes. so and we true for any field not just architecture um, any any profession has to work hard so why architecture is no different um, there is no, nothing that comes in easy like you know even explaining to the client that this is what they need in design 
Yes, what yes. we're offering them is the right solution and for their requirement is it's quite a task. But as you mentioned, the awareness has increased a lot. Oh, and yes. there are a lot of people who have started valuing the idea of uh, design, having an architect on board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like, uh, the work, no, the work that uh, you are pursuing, it has cascading effect, isn't it? Like whenever someone visits that, he realizes that, okay, what is the difference when I have a uh, architect working for me or when someone else is working for me. So that cascading effect of uh, the work that itself uh, will be a, will create a pyramid, huge pyramid. Uh, base for the pyramid. So now what we experienced when we were taking up jobs at different places mm. versus what we are practicing now, they are at two different levels altogether. Yes. Um, when our, our experience and our learnings from our jobs was what we should do and what we should not do in our own practice as well. So mm. um, <coughs> even now, as we are practicing year after year, we are evaluating ourselves to think that there's always this, this entire um, to and fro of thought process that goes on. Um, it's been a good learning and satisfying. satisfying one. Anyone has any questions, please? Yeah, that, that, that template that you have made about one project, how many visits you have done, how much work, <laughs> uh, that is very revealing. And I think uh, we should add some graphics into it and that itself will become a, what is a portfolio to show the clients, not the building. <laughs> what we have done for every one of our clients. So if you give us an opportunity, we will do Thankfully, this. Thankfully, the client of the house values it and he offered us more projects to do. Yes. And uh, I thought for a moment, we thought we were successful because a lot of clients have come back to us saying, Ki, okay, this project has been good. So let's do another one. Yes. Uh, which for us is again, the measure of success that you have done the project successfully. You know, they're, they're coming back to us and they're not, because uh, not just Ahmedabad, but I think India, we have a, lo uh, a huge array of young designers and architects. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it is always competitive to get yeah, projects. Everyone is probably doing a lot of good work, work around. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anyone questions for uh, <coughs> architect Ujwal and Bhairavi? Uh, hi, uh, Ujwal and uh, architect Bhairavi. I'm Shamant here, associate yeah. professor uh, Gita. Uh, we had gone through your presentation. It was a nice journey, very honest approach. In your, in your talk uh, and in your work and in your materiality, what we've seen. I think like we got the uh, underlying word of this forum where we were talking about career in architecture, which is never a fancy world where you think what you see in movies. Uh, you, go, you become an architect and you earn in, uh, we understand the amount of effort what it has gone, right? In, the, in a rising inflation where uh, offices are striving hard uh, to stand up and doing more number of projects, which no one knows how do we uh, sustain uh, at the end of the day, uh, the result, uh, how you are happy, you're happy with this, happy and satisfied with your project success. Right. Like yeah, the, the, the tangible one and the untangible one, which right. is very good thing, which has come up in this forum where the young architects would understand that success or happiness is not related only to the tangible things, but an untangible uh, things which keeps you happy. So that all requires a passion Unless and until you are passionate about doing something, you'll not be happy with what you are getting in. Very true. Right. So this this has hit our uh, uh, discussions. What we wanted to uh, get into these talks. Uh, where As like I said earlier, also know. we both do not have any architecture background. Uh, yeah. We just plunged into the fact of taking this as a profession out of mere moments in our life. <coughs> and um, to that extent, I mean, for me, I I did miserably bad in my first year. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you know it's all part of my learning process yeah, yeah, and yeah. to then go into a master's and and do it relatively better than what i would have done in my bachelor so it was very in that way it has grown on me this field but having looked back i don't think so i i would want to do anything else this is this is good and your, your combination of one being methodological and the other being being emotional i could see that clearly where someone was talking about how would an office work and the other one was more interested in getting the uh, projects and architecture, right? That I, I, could, I could see that in the presentation also. I somewhere think somewhere like, as we were working individually, we realized that as a team, we will have to you know, role play so, so that yeah. it's, it's in control. You know, both of us cannot be very romantic about things. Or, correct, correct. And then, and then the office just falls flat and things do not run. No, it's, it's, it's just trying to... Uh, build and capitalize on our strengths. each other's strengths yeah. because we in the, in the end we both are individuals with our own strengths mm. and yeah. respect that uh, that on the I mean uh, in your uh, 
so person we are working with you know and uh, uh, at the same time do keep working on your weaknesses if but <laughs> more importantly is to identify and accept the fact yeah this is my weakness you know for that matter in fact samant bhai is also an architect and mukesh so, is also an architect <laughs> so like, so, I, like mean, yeah, i mean yeah i mean it, it we have had we have had our own share of uh, discussions, discussions I, <laughs> i know <laughs> how hard how how fairly it looks to other people that both yeah. are architects but what it goes we know what it happens in the background <laughs> to put up what we are yeah but i mean so, i think by self and leave, uh, i also believe that lot of uh, other uh, parallel things beyond our architecture world also helps us to kind balance of balance that out uh, at, as a, at this stage of our life it's our kids um, and you know things like that so it's 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 and i mean we also try to we are very conscious on that front and that's something that i've learned having lived and uh, practiced in singapore for 8 years <clears throat> was to value a time away from your work you know and uh, so when we started off from day one we are still working five days a week and uh, there are still many of my friends who are asking again why are you working five days why you give a day off on saturdays well, i don't know about others i need it off that means <laughs> but we still end up we still end up maybe we are not coming to studio but i still end up going to a site or something yes. but it's okay i'm not on my table though uh, so that is also a very important thing i believe Yeah, actually it becomes our lifestyle so yeah it's a way of life in a way that's something uh, suman has also helped me understand yeah. a little bit more better i guess <laughs> so it was a it was a wonderful uh, presentation we were in a journey i could relate uh, myself with you guys also like how we took decisions to go forward that i could see then uh, what sort of uh, discussions would have gone behind to come in, uh, in into this platform and evolve uh it was a nice uh, presentation and your projects Thanks, are really good i see that honest approach whatever you are talking i could see in your work and this which has been practically implemented uh, i wish you a grand success uh, for more projects to come up <laughs> it should not be 50 to 13 it should actually, be 50 to 52 yeah. a great journey actually yeah thank yeah. you very much uh, for uh, visiting uh, gsa Bitham School of Architecture and enlightening us with your journey. It was really motivating, inspiring. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity once again. Please, thank you. Thank you. Hey, hi, uh, Ujwal and Bairavi. First of all, I would like to congratulate first. <laughs> so that project is really inspiring. Uh, you know, I, I could not, I could not, uh, you know, move my eyes over here. The way you present is really very well, thank and you. that efforts efforts list is. <laughs> really inspiring. Uh, oh, that is very really. Traveled really for forty-two thousand kilometers. I don't know how <laughs> it is. I think that uh, that slide probably so, gets us back the award. That is that is the highlight of this presentation, <laughs> please. <laughs> No, and, but it is uh, so true, you know, because architecture. You look at uh, the the coffee books magazine and stuff. The images are so nice, but the rigor in executing that space is not ever always. It is not discussed also. It's not, not, not discussed also so much. It is and not it's, discussed. I'm, I'm sure it's it is the same with all the offices. It's yes, not yes, only yes, yes. all projects. Yeah, all projects for that matter. Just I, just now, yeah. Just now I was discussing with my wife. She was just. So we we have seen that presentation. You are recording very well. How many times you visited? You recorded very how many kilometers? Well, that's traveled. because you have shelled in those petrol bills, so, you know. <laughs> but show. tell me, tell me one thing. Did you put any of your uh, money into the project? No, <laughs> no. I think what I, the trade off like... the trade off that I did was probably I can share is that we almost did fit for peanuts. Yeah, we did for peanuts. Correct, correct. But uh, but uh, for. I didn't put in on my my own money in it for sure. No. So I think as a professional, you should have that respect. Uh, that's for, that's for your true. Own that's work. true. That's true. I mean, um, it, <laughs> need any professional, you know, IT and all. You may feel आके सिर्फ हथोड़ा मारा है, but इतना पैसा लेके गया. But you should know where to hit the hathoda. That is what a professional does. So um, I think you should have that respect. Do not work for free. Um, you have to. Uh, even the client should value that position. so we have never done that as i said a couple of times we have refused clients primarily because we understood that uh, they are not on the same page of understanding of a professional's requirement for the project so then it is not required and then they can go ahead and do it themselves unfortunately um, we have come into at least 20% of our uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we have, yeah. And there are times we have burned our fingers also. Yes, I mean, so we have learned. Yeah. But that's okay. That's part and parcel of probably all feelings. Yes. <laughs> we can we can relate everything in our career also. Everything, most of the, every journey where you went to Singapore okay. and decision and came back to India. I think similarly, actually, me and Shaman had little similar journey, and both our wives are architects also. So in, that is that was a time we worked in Gulf, uh, Bahrain. I he worked yeah. in Qatar, kind of thing. So it's very interesting actually. After coming back, the the firm name and the project, the way you're handling, really interesting. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you. to go to particularly why to go to Singapore was also something because for our exchange we had been to Europe. And at that yeah. time, we traveled extensively in Europe. Yeah. So again, the travel aspect was a little, uh, again, Singapore is very centralized to go to Cambodia, to this, that, and everything. So that was also one of the playing things. And then for me, I was just looking forward to do in urban design and in Asian conditions, because somewhere I knew I was, I'm going to practice yeah. whatever. Yeah. I might go around the world, but I'll come back here and do something, try to do something by myself. So then, then the limited options came up and then probably Singapore popped up and then popped up. let's try. So that's also an, another story altogether, I mean, you know, as, as a young no, no jobs at all, just trying to pursue to get a job in Singapore. No, no, I should, I should really appreciate after working abroad, coming back to India and working is really challenging. I don't know how, yes, you, how you, how you really chose in it. That shows your commitment, passion, commitment, and you're ready to accept hard working uh -huh. and commitment. That really appreciate it. And uh, you're not just doing projects, you're doing with kind of passion and, you know, uh, those are like, you know, uh, 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 the client will have a remarkable and lifetime is a gift to him. That's what uh, you're trying to do. What we feel is when we were very, uh, we were fresh graduates and very young architects, you know, uh, yeah. we need to explore this. So like travel and work was the only thing that we used to do in the first five years after graduation. Uh, when we see the young graduates joining us now, uh, as, as architects, we do not have any, uh, you know, drafts person in the office, they're all architects. Yeah, that's another uh, policy kind of policy we've taken. Okay. Because each one has to give their interest. If we stop design. making drawings as architects, what are we doing then? So, so. so either way. So uh, when I see these young graduates, uh, they have a different mindset of, you know, exploring. So I think they're my entire, my only advice to uh, young graduates is to to let go of the first five years of your of your professional life to know what kind of a professional you want to develop because architecture is a very wide field and you can you can really choose which way you want to develop further so give yourself a and time I guess, yeah. I guess it's getting complex i recently catch up with a very old friend of mine and she has been now living in us for almost 15 years and I met her after 12 years. And so I now was, she's designing metaverse. And she's designing design. digital spaces in metaverse, metaverse. So. as an architect. And, and that was like, that's another opportunity altogether now. And that's where the, we look for the so, future. So, so the, the future is very bright. It's very diverse uh, for architecture. Um, and, um, before you take up a step in which direction you wish to go, I think even post graduation, you give yourself that uh, that uh, decanting period or that you know the probation period of incubation period. Incubation period. Incubation. What you really want to do. Mm -hmm. so, a lot of young graduates who work with us, we tell the same thing. You know, at least work for three, four years, and you you would know which which path you need to take further as a professional. So that's interesting. Uh, last week we had a young architect, Vinod Kumar. Uh, who is uh, into visualization, architectural visualization. So he, he is no more an architect, but he works for architects. I mean, if, if I just talk about my own batchmates, we have one who has gone into filmmaking. Yeah. Yes, uh, filmmaking also. We have one uh, who is completely... Um, um, one, gone into, one is started working with UNESCO and just trying to go to places where they need to rebuild things, you know. Yeah. Actually, next week, Warangal, in Warangal, there is a program by UNESCO. Right. Warangal has been selected as one of the learning cities, heritage learning cities by UNESCO. Right. So probably maybe your friend would be there. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> hardcore kind of practice, practice out of the third, for, we first year we were 40, then we became 33 by the year two. So out of the 33 that we graduated in a batch, I think hardcore practicing is only 50% of us are totally yes. into hardcore practice. Everyone kind of... But I mean, that's the kind of uh, um, 
the curriculum of learning architecture allows you to gives that freedom you know for you to uh, dwell into some other things as well if need be <clears throat> so nice of you being here and it's very revealing and it makes us happy and uh, uh, makes us believe that there is a very bright future for architects. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, Nikda, a very official word of thanks. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, so I would congratulate both our guest speakers on this wonderful uh, explanation through the presentation about their journey as an architecture student to architect and how they are uh, like, it was very inspiring how you elaborated on your first project. And, and the best part was, uh, what was the background? Like we have bloopers now in our videos, bloopers and all. So you showed that uh, how much kilometers, how many hours and all. So that was that was very inspiring. And, and um, I would like to wish you uh, a great, like congratulate you on your uh, success and wish you all the best also. And uh, actually I also had one question that uh, yes, what, yes. what is the, uh, like uh, when I uh, was going through the works of yours and so I was very curious to know that how this reasoning in Stakes architecture studio name came up to like what is the history what is the thought process behind that as I said uh, we have been working independently for quite some time different setups and then when we decided to it took us about nine months to come to a consensus so and uh, the consensus was not just for the name it was for how we would be running the practice what would be the ethos of the practice uh, bringing both of our, uh, you know, best strengths forward. So uh, if you look at the name, it's reasoning instincts. That's because I use a lot of reasoning when I design. I need to have a contextual or a figurative reason for any idea as well to be implemented at a particular place. Whereby Ujwal, on the other hand, he designs very instinctively. He goes to the side and he's like, Abhi mujhe ye pe chahiye, no? so he goes with his guts more and then he doesn't even try to you know find a reason for it so there was something that so now that we have design discussions on the very first conceptual design discussions it always uh, ends up saying iski kya zarurat hai why are you asking the client to spend money on this and then he has to have his enactment of experiential value to the space because site suggests this and you know so that's how uh, it is so the, the one interesting i'm just sharing thing is exactly. actually uh, this uh, word or this kind of name uh, when I graduated, uh, I think and between I, I, I started my own practice, I immediately joined the HCP. I'm, I submitted my thesis today and tomorrow I joined HCP. So there was a gap between, I left the job at HCP and I moved to Singapore three or four months. That's around in 2007 to December to March, 2008. And that was a period of time when I was trying to look for jobs in Singapore and everything. And then as a dreamer, I started dreaming about whenever we will have a practice, what will it So this term was coined at that time. There were some other kind of suffix and prefix around it at that time. But, but then it, it, it happened there and just put it down. And then later on, it just So when you see reasoning in practice studio, it is R-I-A-S, which is Riyas. Oh, yeah, so this is also practice. Practice. So. practice. It's its own way. <laughs> yeah. very, very, um, shy, very, yes. Yes. <laughs> very transparent thought process like it's very honest how you say i think that's that's what i would also encourage even with all the students to just to I stay think honest honesty has cost us many times many projects but as that's well. okay if you <laughs> want to go okay. long run i believe just stay honest yeah that is something we value a lot the work ethics yes at our front is valued a lot Hi, sir. This is and I have a couple of questions. Um, this is Yashasri doing my ninth semester, which is internship, uh, which is our internship. And I'm pretty sure all my classmates are very confused and are like, we aren't sure of what we want to do. And uh, this presenta presentation has been helpful. It was lovely how you showed us your journey and... Um, so I wanted to ask, like, how has your master's helped into your practice? I mean, you know, uh, how do, how were you so sure of doing master's and then job? Like, how did the whole decision making happen in your life? Yes, yes. Uh, if you look at our timeline, uh, yeah. Post graduation, we started to work. 
and uh, we worked for at least three years mm -hmm. uh, in different scenarios, whichever scenario best suited us, uh, which paid us enough to survive. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact is master's degree in architecture, um, it, in my personal opinion, it is for your self growth only. Mm -hmm. uh, it, okay. it, it helps you realize your uh, strength, accept them. Because when you're in practice, when you're, when you're practicing for yourself mm -hmm. or for anybody else, it is very rigorous. So you won't have the time to reflect upon. Both of us mm -hmm. worked for a few years and then we decided to take up a master course. Ujwal was very sure mm -hmm. he wanted to work on design. For me, to be very honest, I wanted to get away from Singapore. I was working too hard. I was working 16 hours a day at times. And I said, I cannot carry on working like this. So I decided to take a leap of faith and I went to UK and I came back after a year. Um, mm -hmm. The course was random. I, I selected my course. And anything, I everything I learned from that course is a learning for me at that yeah. point, and it still mm -hmm. is. Now, as a practice, it's been 2010, we have uh, done our masters. Um, it's been 2022, 12 years, we still haven't done any urban design project per se. Yeah, we have done competitions We've and done everything. competitions because we have that urge. Yeah. So you, what does a master uh, class or a post graduation does for you? Um, is primarily open up your thinking capacity to a certain level. Okay. How it pays mm -hmm. back in your career is a different ball game altogether. So it is not yeah. uh, architecture course as such is not like you know information technology ki MBA kar liya to aapka salary bad jayega. It is never like that. You know it, right. uh, it is very mm -hmm. important to understand this position. Um, yeah. There are always two different types of master courses: master by research and master, master by, by course. By course. So you can decide which yeah. way want to go you know if you want to go by research then that's a very methodical way of having a good career as a professor as a lecturer yeah. and everything but yeah. if you go by course uh trust me out of many examples we have seen uh <coughs> family is for self growth self-awareness and the other how you successfully apply those learnings in your practice yeah, so in, I think for both of us, yeah, yeah. So for both of us, doing masters was only for uh, self enrichment. Yes. <laughs> it was not <laughs> with an intent of okay, if I'll do this, I'll get that kind of a thing. Yeah. It was just when I was working with HCP, I was I got an opportunity to work on Sabarmati Riverfront project yeah, as a junior okay. architect, and we did this huge presentation, and we made a twenty-two meters by five meters drawing. You know, for uh, yeah. the vibrant Gujarat <laughs> exhibition and everything, and that's. That's what brought me more interested in, in urban design. And so mm. that's what I said. If I want to do my master's, I would do in urban design. The other, so things like, yes, it helped me. Uh, it helped me not only in my self enrichment but when I uh, got this uh, opportunity, which again was not uh, sought after of teaching at Singapore Polytechnic, but uh, having a mm. master's degree did help me to grab that job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I had studied in the local university over there, and hence they thought, mm -hmm. okay, if I have, I'm just wondering if I would have applied for that job uh, without that, maybe my application would not have been looked into, you know. But again, that was also that just happened very organically. I was looking for a switch in job, and so I think every every mm -hmm. has his own journey. There can always be set rules. Okay. It's not yes. defined. It's not defined. But the what... only constant is hard work. So while I said yeah. that I want to escape 16 hours in Singapore and go to Edinburgh, I was even working 16 hours in Edinburgh on my course because it was a two-year course condensed to one year. So it oh, was the same. I still had to do my thesis. I still had it. It's not easy to say, Ki bhai, you know, it is easy to study. Yeah. It isn't. And actually, for students, you know, what I tell them is it's not about hard work. It, uh, it is about being inspired. <laughs> to, right. For a student, for the student, if you say hard work, they, they will never understand what is hard work. But uh, definitely be inspired is the uh, trick for them. I mean, being inspired will al already give you that energy to work hard. Yes. And you won't yes. even look, look back at it and say, Ki, I worked 18 hours a day, I'm tired. You, know? you, do, you actually don't measure that at that time. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you're so, very true, very true, sir. Coming back to the second part of it, you, what you were asking that you're feeling very confused, like more of, uh, we were also at that yeah. time. We were also confused in that way at that time. But I think what I would like now looking back and I could just advise is give yourself some time. 
give that incubation period to discover yourself, to identify what you really want to do. Don't rush into it. And only when you are certain about it, go for it. I mean, I had a, I had a batchmate in my master's course. She was 54. Her daughter was 18. Uh, she was a Singapore citizen. And, and that's the time she said, now finally I have time to, to do my master's and I'll do it now. You know, so uh, there are, I mean, that's very, and this kind of examples you will see a lot, but not yeah. in, in context, it's not that much. Uh, but yeah, I, I give yourself some time. Probably it will help. Be more aware of what is, because your academic world is going to be very different from your Practice. world outside your campus, you know, and uh, which is both have their equal strengths. So I value both of them. What we can do in academics is also a great thing, you know. So mm. give yourself some time in that practice world and then probably you will have more clarity on uh, identifying your own uh, desire or your yes. own pursuit, you know, and then you can go for it. Yes. Thank you so much for being so honest. I think we actually needed this. And um, did you have those uh, um, times where... Uh, well, obviously does matter at like, you know, at a point. And so I have seen so many people say, um, it's really hard to get to a stage where you can afford yourself a house and car or all the basic <laughs> amenities being an architect. I, I, this, I mean, it. Uh, I don't know if, how far it's going. I'm still starting my journey. And no, yeah, I mean, the, I think, it's, it's a very valid concern that you are sharing. I'm not denying that. Yeah. And uh, that was, again, one of the reasons uh, for us to take a decision to ship to Singapore because we thought we'd be mm. able to save some more money to do things that we want to much faster than what... I, if I would have worked for eight years in India, would I have got that much of money to start my to practice? Start my practice? <laughs> compared to I worked in Singapore, but uh, both, I mean, yeah. you know, at that time you're thinking in that way and doing things, mm -hmm. but I think at the same time, I also believe uh, this whole idea in, 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 in support systems, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I do, I live with my parents and, and it's, it's not, I'm, I have an elder brother. So somewhere uh, mm -hmm. uh, he's an engineer, he's an electronics and he's living in US and he's not going to come back. He's there, he's having a wonderful mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And my father is also almost now, he's actually post his retirement age, but he's still working. Uh, but somewhere down the line, I have always felt about this as that they both are my safety nets. You know, uh, if yeah. I am, I am Exa this is who, exactly what I mean. If I am the one who is more, uh, you know, restless guy who is just jumping around the trapeze here and there, uh, I know there is this safety net for me and that has probably helped me a lot in in even taking certain decisions that i have taken you will or, have to take the leap of faith at certain point in time um, yeah. Uh, yeah. architecture even your design is all about so, conceptualizing so you have to conceptualize yes. so don't be afraid. I have been. Yeah. and at the same time yeah. this is I don't disconnect i see a lot of young students kind of take the onus, a lot of onus on themselves. Oh, I have to be independent. Yeah. I have to do this. Mm, yes, no, no, no. That's not the criteria. It's good. No, uh, and we were also like that. I mean, I worked before I did my master's because I wanted to pay for my master's by myself, which I did eventually. Okay, you know? yeah. But, Correct. but uh, that does not mean that uh, if I need support, I am not going to... So far, so good. It has been well. <laughs> But if it had gone with the other way around, I probably believed that I had a safety net. And to that and to that extent, the kind of education system architecture curriculum gives, I've always believed. Mm. Kuch na kuch to hai <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, for yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Uh, anybody a... is has any questions? Uh, so, uh, so I would like to thank both our guest speaker, sir and ma'am, for their inspiring thoughts and also giving us the opportunity to look forward through all their works and very inspiring works. 
so <clears throat> now i would like to uh, end the session with a small vote of thanks so i uh, so the, um, i would like to uh, request that uh, up to attend everyone the upcoming webinars and also uh, you will have a broad all of you will have a broad spectrum of knowledge from other eminent speakers and uh, all this will be updated in our all the social media platforms whether it's uh, instagram facebook or linkedin and uh, i would also like to express my appreciation to all the participants for uh, taking out their time of the busy schedule and on behalf of geetam school of architecture i would also like to close my remarks and officially announce the end of the webinar wishing the future prosperity of all the participants students and i further extend my gratitude to our esteemed speaker for today and faculties all faculties of school of architecture hyderabad thank you for your attention stay safe and healthy signing off this is your today's host architect snigtha roy thank you so much thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you bhai ravi and ujwal thank you thank you ujwal thank you thank you thank you yeah and suman special thanks for you yes thank you <laughs> introducing thank you everyone this wonderful couple thank you so much thank you thank you everyone thank you yeah